What is going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing fantastically well. Today I've got some more entitled parent stories for you, so sit back, relax, and let's get into them. Entitled mum doesn't like where I parked my ambulance whilst we were saving a life, so crashed her own car. Hello, I thought I would tell another tale from the weird and wonderful world of a UK ambulance service. I work for an emergency ambulance service and have done for many years. This happened about four years ago. My crewmate and I were sent a call down to our computer, satnav, at about 2pm, one very warm and sunny shift. We were just given an address at first and that it was the highest category of calls, which means we had eight minutes to get there but no details on what the call was. This isn't unusual. They get an address first to save precious second sending us then downgrade the job to a lower category if needs be once the details have come through i'm driving whilst one of my favorite crewmates was in the passenger seat so on go the blue lights and sirens to get through the building traffic then our dispatcher calls us up on the radio female mid 50s cpr in progress well dang we race like heck to get to this poor lady every minute counts when doing cpr the longer it goes on the more risk of brain damage and less likelihood of getting the patient back Luckily, we weren't far off and got there very quickly. The lady lived in a very nice house on a well-off street. It was a typical Crescent Street, half moon shaped with both ends of the street connecting to the same main road. There was a long line of cars parked on one side of the street, meaning that there was only enough room for one car to pass at a time. Thankfully, there was no one driving the other way and I was able to drive to the lady's house without encountering anyone coming the other way. Score, there was a rapid response car already on scene. That means we had another set of hands to help and they will have already taken all the equipment into the house so we didn't have to because of all the parked cars i was unable to pull the big box van in to allow other drivers to pass so i just blocked the road the blue lights were still going but the sirens had been turned off there's no use deafening ourselves whilst we work we rush into the house and find our lady laid on the floor of her entrance hall with my manager making sure that her airway was clear whilst the poor lady's daughter was continuing doing cpr i quickly swapped with the daughter and continued chest compression impressions whilst the other two went about doing all the other little things that need doing at this time i will spare you all the medical details but i will say that during chest compressions a heart is not working it stopped so we attempt to restart it while also pumping the blood around the body and to the brain enough that the patient doesn't get brain damage unfortunately cpr has a very low success rate as other medical conditions usually cause issues as well that day however everything was in our favor and we got a heart rhythm back this is not the movies she didn't suddenly wake up sit up thank us and go on her way we had sorted the immediate problem but not what had caused the heart to stop you need some very specialist doctors for that it was at this point we all heard someone beeping like crazy on their car horn but we were all busy and ignored the noise as we had gotten a rhythm it was now a race to get the lady into hospital to the doctors before it was lost again i raced back out to the ambulance to find some karen in a car in front of my ambulance just sat beeping her horn angrily as soon as she saw me she opened her window to shout at me you need to move that ambulance i need to pick up my kids from school don't you know how to park you can't just block the road mom this is a medical emergency i will not move and i'm within my rights to park where i am but i need to pick up my kids you epic idiot so move I would like to again point out that this was not a dead end street She could have easily reversed or turned around in someone's driveway and gone out the other side But no, she decided to sit and shout at an ambulance instead I ignore her open the back of the ambulance and get the stretcher out and to the house All while karen is shouting and swearing at me Karen, I deal with drunks and druggies at the weekend. You haven't even managed a third of the bad language I get from them. I am not moving for you. My manager had heard the shouting but was busy so didn't do much more than look up at me. I'm not showing signs of worry so he just shrugged it off. He has been working with me for long enough to know I can handle most things. We quickly lift our patient onto the stretcher just outside our house but the movement means that her already weak heart stops again. Dang. We start chest compressions again, and as we do, we hear an almighty bang and the sound of metal scrapping on stone. Frick, what has Karen done? As I'm stood nearest the road in the front garden, I am the only one who can see what's happened. I don't know how many people know this, but outside some British homes between the pavement and the road, there is sometimes a patch of grass called a verge. Most people don't want strangers parking their cars on this verge and tearing it up, so go to all sorts of lengths to stop people from driving on it. Around here, 
it is quite common to have large bits of concrete about the size and shape of half a yoga ball placed on the edges of the verge and painted white so that they are clearly visible. Can you see where this is going yet? Yep, instead of doing the same sensible thing of turning around or reversing, our dumb Karen had attempted to go around the ambulance by driving onto the grass verge at full speed, hitting one of these balls and actually going up onto it, beaching her car on the concrete. I could see her sat in the driver's seat shouting and hitting her steering wheel my manager doesn't even look up from the patient he is working on what's going on nothing boss just some karma at work i take over the chest compressions as we quickly roll the stretcher to the ambulance i see the moment karen sees us she was red-faced until she turned her head towards us to see three ambulance workers doing cpr on our lady I've never seen someone go so white so quickly. She shrinks down into her chair and tries to disappear as I just smirk at her. At this point, both my crewmates and manager have seen the beach car. To be fair, it was hard to miss. And I heard a quiet, what the F from my manager. We loaded the patient up and just before we set off, we got a pulse again. Yay. A very quick run into the hospital and some excellent work by the doctors meant that our lady was awarded a brilliant prognosis and she was able to leave the hospital not long after. Sorry, I can't remember how long she was in for. I don't know what happened to Karen. Maybe she is still stuck there for all eternity. Well, hey, we can only hope. That would be fantastic if that was the case. Now, I don't want to be too harsh on this Karen unnecessarily, but come on, you know those rather big white vans that have, you know, some pluses on them, flashing blue lights, uh, yeah, lots of medical equipment equipment inside them and on the outside um yeah those are ambulances they tend to make loud noises as well um i think that everyone knows what they are and what purpose they serve in society if you see one karen please don't try and go around it unnecessarily going up on the pavement because that's not going to work clearly you're going to get stuck also just have some patience or go around the other way why would you do that to an ambulance someone's life is being saved and you could seriously potentially be ruining slash killing somebody if you interfere with an ambulance doing its job now moving on to our second story no your son can't have my gun you can shoot at me what a weird title i have a friend that has an airsoft gun i would have bought it myself but law doesn't let me in my country you can't have airsoft weapons accessories and stuff until you are 18 yes i know it's kind of stupid but it's a firearm at least that's what my government says so my friend lets me shoot his in his backyard now recently in his neighborhood moved in an entitled mum with her 10 year old son and he was also a fan of Airsoft. So let's move on to the story, shall we? So we were shooting at the cans of beer and sodas and whatever we drank when we hear the doorbell. It was an entitled mum and her nice kid. My friend said to them, Hello, how can I help you? Oh, hi, we are new here, and my son says he is a fan of airsoft? Her nice kid nods. And he always wanted to shoot an airsoft gun, and I'd like to ask what it is because I've never heard of it. I should now add that my friend got cops called on him a few times due to people assuming he has a gun and is shooting in the backyard you know it happens sometimes so he once went around the neighbors and told them that he has airsoft guns so they wouldn't call the cops since then he never had that kind of visitors well maybe how do you know i have an airsoft gun anyway we saw you when we drove here well okay i don't mind if he shoots one or two mags so they enter my friend says some safety things and i run upstairs to go grab a pair of airsoft glasses when i come back the kid has my glasses on his face hey kiddo these are my glasses take these other ones please the entitled mum then activates entitled mode is that gonna be a problem well no then can't he keep them uh, I guess he can. I don't mind that much anyway. I should address that I have a problem with trust, naivety, and small self-esteem, so I mostly go with whatever people are saying. Meanwhile, I ask if the entitled mum wants a coffee. She says yes and asks if I can make a tea for her son. I have no problem with it, so I make some water to boil and go check out my friend and the kid shooting. The little guy was pretty good. His aim wasn't bad. You can see he'd never held a gun before, but he wasn't bad, and my friend was helping him. Overall, he was a pretty nice kid my friend lent him an electric colt 1911 a great gun i must say 
He didn't want to let him shoot from bigger guns because a it could be pretty heavy for him and b They are expensive and c he is kind of anxious about lending them. I know I know it's boring so far But give me a sec I must say that my friend owns an m16 a4 with an under barrel m203 grenade launcher I paid for it and he has it in his possession until i'm old enough to own it legally But I use it in his house. I call her monica. Don't ask why no, I won't i'm presuming that the grenade launcher is I don't know what it would be but obviously Obviously not an actual grenade. The entitled mum notices me taking Monica and going on to the practice range. Can't he shoot your gun? No, he can't. I don't lend it to anyone except my friend. Aren't you too young to own it? She then stands up and gets closer to me. Yes, yes, I am. And I don't own it. It's my friend's, but I bought it. Hmm. <laughs> Before we know it, it's 5.30 p.m. My friend says, I'd like to ask you to leave because it's getting kind of late, but you are more than welcome to come back on Monday. Oh, okay. Thanks for the practice and everything, said the kid. You're welcome, kiddo. You are pretty good too. Thank you, sir. Ah, call me OP. The nice kid then goes to give back my friend's gun and glasses, but his entitled mum stops him. Can't he keep it? No, no, he can't. But he was so nice and good with it. Plus, you have plenty of guns. I'm sure you wouldn't miss one. I said no, it's expensive. He's also too young for it. But so is your friend. He shouldn't have it. I told you that all guns here are my friends. I don't own any of this. At this time, me and my friend are pretty annoyed. We just wanted to clean up and go to sleep. I was at a sleepover that day. Mum, stop. Let's just go home, said the kid. Okay, kid, come here then she did something unexpected she took the gun the kid had and started shooting at us with a full clip of 33 bbs the gun was on full auto by the way now a few of you might say but there was safety well there is safety but it's a weird one it's on the grip if it's pressed it's good to go if it's not it's blocked you get the idea me and my friend instantly started covering our eyes because we didn't have glasses on i have a dioptric but i wasn't sure about it she shot about 10 bbs before she dropped it from the high recoil because i don't know maybe she didn't expect it she took her kid and ran the frick out of there both of us were in shock but we were okay her aim was atrocious so she didn't hit us many times the gun was okay too it was mostly metal and sturdy plastic it was shooting fine my friend didn't want to bother with charges so he let it go we then took the bbs and other stuff and started cleaning the next day the nice kid came to my friend's doorstep i opened the door oh hey kid hi i'm sorry for what happened earlier and i wanted to give you back glasses that i took before i could drop them i'm sorry it's okay kiddo my friend then comes to the door oh hey kid hello sir i'm sorry for what happened don't be it wasn't your fault and thanks for returning the glasses that's all then goodbye I could see that he was pretty sorry about it. Hey, if you ever wanted to shoot sometime, you are welcome. Just leave your mum home, okay? The kid laughs. Oh, all right, thank you. After that, the kid sometimes came to my friend's house to practice. And he is starting to get good too. Oh, I just feel really bad for the kid. Why does this nice kid have to have such an entitled mum? You know, he'd be a good kid. But I fear that if he gets, you know, led by her roles and her morals into the wrong sort of path, the wrong sort of way of thinking about life, he may not turn into the kid that he, he should be. No, he, he sounds like a good kid to me right now. But give it five, ten years, I, I'm not sure, guys. To be honest, though, it does sound like he knows exactly what he's doing. And it also sounds like he's gotten quite used to apologizing for his mother. He's clearly done this before, am I right? Now, guys, before I go today, we do have time for one quick piece of fan art. Now, this one is from my own subreddit, r slash redditor yt. We've now got way over 20,000 members. Guys, if you're not on the subreddit, it's it's, just, it's in the description, in the pinned comment. It's everywhere. Go and get on it. There's loads of good stuff on there that all of you lot post about the channel, about Reddit, about everything. It's a lot of fun. Go ahead over there. So, guys, as you can see, today's art is by Electric Decades. I mean, this is just really good. Like, some of you are mad talented, by the way. I'm so terrible at drawing and art in general. So, when I see stuff like this, it's genuinely really, really impressive. A crazy talent, Electric Decades. Thank you very much for this. It's, it's pretty much perfect, right? I mean, what's wrong with it? Guys, if you have any fan art, that you want to send in hit me up on socials anywhere as i said redditor yt is my subreddit twitter works discord works anything works hit me up and you have a chance of being in a video so guys that is going to do it for this episode of entitled parents i really hope you have enjoyed it if you did remember to smash a like on the video comment your opinions down below and most importantly make sure you are subscribed to the channel with notifications on so you never miss a daily upload